All right, folks, we are back. It's the Info Warrior with Jason Bermans, and we're going to get into the uh, swine flu news, the pandemic news. I was going through the headlines today, and one of the headlines was about the Mayo Clinic. They were kind of dissing the Mayo Clinic in the articles that I was reading. There was one, I think, in Reuters and then one on MSNBC, possibly on Fox. I hit those news wires today. Uh, might have even been over at the Drudge Report and went there today as well. And what reminded me about the Mayo Clinic and how important a, I think it was a paper they did a month and a half, two months ago, was the fact that they actually said that people who took the regular flu vaccine were actually more likely to get the flu. And they kind of poo-pooed it. They said, oh, this doesn't mean don't get the flu vaccine, but we did do this study, and if you take the flu vaccine, you are more likely to get the flu. Now, that would really coincide why they're hyping up that the swine flu could kill millions unless rich nations give up 900 million pounds, which is well over a billion dollars, folks. Well over a billion dollars in order to inoculate the third world. A woman wears a mask as a preventative measure against swine flu. That's a soon hospital in Pune, India. August 11, 2009, the swine flu pandemic could kill millions and cause anarchy in the world's poorest nations. Unless 900 million pounds can be raised from rich countries to pay for vaccines and antiviral, me antiviral medicines. So they're squeezing us for money. This is about profit as well. But at the same time, it's about eugenics. It's about population sustainability. I, I mean, I, I still have a hard time even dealing with this. The case... For killing granny. I mean, this isn't shocking. This isn't horrid. And I'm at a, I'm at Twin Peaks. The people over in uh, in Texas might know what it is, but uh, it's a knockoff of Hooters, basically. It's like a woodsy knockoff of Hooters. I, I go to eat there every once in a while because it's around the corner from the office. And yes, I like mindless sports and beer, pretty girls as well sometimes. And our waitress, you know, they have to be friendly to you at these places. She's coming over and talking and, uh, you know, she's asking, you know, do we work around here? What do we do? And I tell her and she's like, yeah, oh, politics. I'm really into that. I'm like, OK, sure you are, lady. <laughs> and she got, starts going, well, you know, my professor says that this redistribution of wealth is a good thing and that the wealthy elites don't like it. And I'm like, well, actually, the wealthy elites love population sustainability and they love redistribution of wealth. And she was talking about how great socialism was. And I'm like, they love socialism as well because the elites never give anything up. It's not like they're like, oh, socialism's here. Have my yacht. <laughs> oh, socialism's here. It's time to take my mansion away from me. No, it's socialism's here. Now I have a bunch of slave laborers to carry out my will and not challenge what I'm doing. And this girl is sitting there and I, and she can't really get her head around it. I'm like, you name one socialist regime where it was true socialism and there was not an elite class. She thought about it for a second and she couldn't say, say anything. And I said, well, what happened in uh, communist Russia? I'm like, well, you had kind of a quasi-socialist society there in communism. Did the elites give up power there? I'm like, no, they ruled over the people. They consolidated their power. And it was, you know, I was trying to explain to her what it was about, but I only had so many times, and uh, the chicken wings were delicious, folks. So, I, you know, I hope that uh, she did ask me uh, where I could find the, she could find the information on it. I don't know if she looked into any, and I told her to Google the Info Warrior and check it out. But here it is, swine flu could kill millions unless rich nations give 900 million pounds. Over a billion dollars, probably 1.3 or 4 billion dollars on the conversion rate. I don't know how many SDRs that is. I'd have to go to the SDR unit conversion table, the true global currency at this point, to find out. We'll be back after this. It's the Info Warrior with Jason Vermis. Go check out the websites, InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv. The call in line is 888-201-2244. You know, it doesn't seem to matter. That Reuters prints an article out there that says swine flu death rate similar to seasonal flu. Expert. No, it's still going to be a pandemic. The death rate from the pandemic H1N1 swine flu is likely lower than earlier estimates. This one's uh, on a Wednesday's uh, edition. An expert of infectious diseases said on Wednesday, new estimates suggest that the death rate compares to a moderate year of seasonal influenza. But you see, they can't get the hype. They can't get you to take their eugenics shot full of squalene, full of mercury, full of God knows what. 
unless they hype it up to, oh, my God, everybody's going to die from the big flu. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's coming. And that's what it's really like. Remember, I mean, they're like, when can I get the shot? I'm watching Fox News the other. When can I get the shot? I need the shot. And they're like, don't worry. That first week of October, we're shipping them out and shipping them in. And it might not even be a shot. You can take it as a nasal spray, making it all the more appealing. So you won't have to roll up your sleeve. You can just <laughs> that quick. It's like I have an allergy. And people will fall for it. And then they are gearing you up. Reuters gears you up the same day as this is printed, where they say death rate similar to seasonal flu. The same day they print this article, they print this article, flu experts gear up for a pandemic of vaccine worry. Saying, all right, you're going to take the vaccine. Don't worry. None of it, uh, none of it's real. They're all lying to you. Like right here, spirit of 76. Memories linger of the 1976 swine flu debacle when 43 million Americans were vaccinated against a virus that never spread. 43 million Americans in 1976. Pretty sure the population of the United States is around 220, maybe 230 million then. Okay. So they got about, you know, one in every five or six Americans to take the shot. Let's see. Uh, and newspapers filled with reports of a rare and crippling neurological disease called Gillian Bear syndrome. Gillian Bear was never definitively linked with the vaccine, but many Americans have viewed immunizations with suspicion ever since. Never definitively. All right, I'm going to talk slow as if you're a six year old retarded child. Okay. Of course it was the shot that paralyzed people, gave them quadriplegia, made them wear leg braces the rest of their life, killed them in some instances. Of course it was the shot. Never definitively proved. That's like them saying to you that the vaccines that contain mercury don't, they, they've never, ever, ever given anyone autism. But then, like, two years ago, they wrote this study that somebody who took a shot did get autistic, like, uh, uh, what was it? They, they worded it so they said it wasn't actually autism, but autistic-like symptoms. And they just basically blatantly admitted, yes, uh, it looks like it was the mercury from the vaccination, but it's not really autism, so just move on. Just act like it doesn't exist. Take your shot and smile, and if you do get sick, you are going to get sick anyway. I mean, come on. We have anticipated there will be a need for enhanced surveillance for Gilliam Bear as well as other adverse events. See, they, they actually admit here that they, they're still going to have to screen for it. After they tell you it was never definitively linked and not to worry, they say, well, don't worry, we're going to screen for it if it actually does occur. And there will be more to contend with the critical newspaper and television reports. The Internet did not exist in 1976, nor did blogs, Facebook, Twitter, or dozens of other ways for people to communicate globally and instantly. This tells me that they're afraid that if something does go wrong in the first 24 hours, the first week of this thing, and the local media does pick up on it and people do flip out about it, that it could spread like wildfire and hinder their plans. We're going to take your calls coming up in the next segment. We're going to go to William in Oklahoma and much, much more. 888-201-2244. It's the Info Warrior with Jason Burmis. Go check out the Bobby Bloggins at theinfowarrior.com.